all processes that attract a payment will have a system generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sectional property survey tutorial. Sectional property survey involves georeferencing of sectional units for which there is a desire by a developer or a corporation to register such units in accordance with the relevant acts and policies guiding the same. The sectional property survey application process is initiated by a licensed surveyor registered on the Adisasa platform. To begin with, you log into the platform. You will then be required to enter your Adisasa user credentials, that is either the identification number or the Adisasa ID and the password used when creating your account, and then click continue. You will be provided with a one-time password code and OTP which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and click login. You will then be navigated to the dashboard. It is important to note that when you first log in, the account you are logged in with is your private account. For you to initiate a sectional property survey application process, you will need to switch to your licensed survey account. So you do so by clicking on the profile icon and it will display a drop down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as a licensed surveyor. Switch to your licensed survey account and you will be able to proceed and initiate the application. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube video in the video description. On the landing page, you will navigate to the survey and mapping department. There are a number of services offered here. You will proceed and click on sectional property. You will be navigated to the applications page and here there are a number of tabs provided. We have four tabs namely pending, ongoing, approved and rejected. All the sectional property applications that you have initiated as a licensed surveyor will be listed among the tabs provided depending on the level of processing of your applications. The pending tab is for the applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the sectional property survey application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have made but is up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to work on it. The approved tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. And the rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. Reasons for rejection will be communicated to the applicant. For you to initiate this application as a licensed surveyor, you will click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. It is important to note that if you haven't switched roles, the new application button will be unavailable. Upon doing so, you will be navigated to the page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions related to the sectional property survey application process. It is highly recommended that you go through all of them, and particularly the one detailing the requirements needed. An important part of the FAQ section is the payment required. These payments are the checking fee and the fee payable for the authentication of plans submitted to the director for approval in accordance with the existing act. At no point will the license surveyor or the proprietor be asked for any other payment whatsoever. If satisfied, click on Next. You will then be navigated to the application details page. This page contains four distinct subsections which are mandatory to fill. As such, you will be required to key in the required information. They include the survey details, applicant's information details, the location details, as well as the unit documents. It is important to note that it is mandatory to fill in the requirements with an asterisk sign alongside them failure to which you will not be able to successfully submit the application. You'll first fill in the parcel details. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format registry forward slash block and then the block number with no space in between forward slash the parcel number. You will then be required to select the projection type. Surveyors can now submit their work in either Cassini or UTM format. Proceed to choose the projection zone in which the property lies. In this case, the sectional property we are going to submit is in Nairobi. Therefore, it lies in ARC 1960 forward slash UTM zone 37 South. Please make sure you are aware of the correct projection type. 
Next, you will enter the applicant information details, which are either the developer at the SASA ID or the corporation or management company at the SASA ID. At least one of these fields must be added. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will enter the corporation or management company at the SASA ID and click on search. And the details of the corporation or management company will be populated below. In case you enter the wrong details, click on the remove button and proceed to enter the correct details. You'll then move to the location details. First, select the county where the property is situated. In our case, it is Nairobi. The sub-county is Langata, and the locality is the city of Nairobi. In case you have any other location details that you have, you can add in the additional details section, but it is not mandatory. You'll then navigate to the units document section. This is where you'll be required to attach all the sectional files that are required in this process. Please take note of the required file formats for the documents before uploading them. The first document to attach is the computation sheet. To do this, you'll navigate to the folder that you have saved your work. You are encouraged to always save each job's scanned documents in one folder to ease the process of attaching the documents. In this case, we'll navigate to the folder in which the computation sheet is saved. In the format XLS, CSV, or XLSX. The next document you need to attach is the unit plan's shapefile. It is important to note that it is to be saved as a zip file, so make sure you zip in the five required file extensions. Finally, you will attach the floor plan in PDF format. If satisfied, click Next. You will be navigated to the Field Notes Cover Details page. To begin with, you are supposed to enter the date on which the field survey was completed. Then, there is the date of completion of instrument calibration, which as you can see, does not have an asterisk alongside it, and is therefore not a mandatory field. If available, the date should be provided. You will then enter the FR number, and then click on Add, and the FR number will be listed alongside the text box. You can also add multiple FR numbers through the same process. If you are satisfied with the details provided, go ahead and click on Next. The next section is the Attach Files section. This is where you'll be required to attach the cadastral files that are required in this process. Also, please take note of the required file formats for the documents before uploading them. So the first document to attach is the Site Building Plan. To do this, you'll need to navigate to the folder that you have saved your work and select the document which will be attached alongside the Choose File button. The next document you'll need to attach is the cadastral plan. Then attach the cadastral shape file as a zip file, so make sure you zip in the five file formats. You'll also attach the approved architectural plan, the building permit, the field notes, and the survey report all in PDF format. The endorsed document is an optional upload which should be attached when available. If you have any additional documents which you feel will be relevant to this application, you can key in the name of the document in the text box provided, and once you start doing so, the Choose File button alongside the text box will be activated, and you will be able to upload the document. If you are satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate this process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last section is the Verify Details section with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details you have provided. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. You also have an option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request, and then proceed and click Yes. You'll then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box to affirm that the application has been created successfully, and then click on Close. It is important to note that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar, as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. As mentioned earlier, there is the survey fee that is to be paid. To make this payment, click on the Invoice tab, and as you can see, the invoice status is pending. You can also see the amount to be paid, and view the invoice of the payment to be made. To make the payment, click on the Pay button and you will be provided with the available methods for payment, as well as the procedures to be used. Once the payment is made, 
the status of payment will change from pending to complete. A key thing to note is that you'll have the option of viewing the invoice. So upon clicking on view, two options will be displayed. There's the invoice and the receipt. The receipt option is not active until the checking fee or survey fee is paid. Additionally, once you click on either the invoice or the receipt, you'll also have the opportunity to download them to your local machine. So once the payment has been made, the submit request button on the top right hand corner is activated and you, the license surveyor, will now be able to submit the application. When you click the submit request button, a pop-up notification will appear requiring you as the applicant to affirm that you want to submit the request. Click yes and another notification will appear affirming that the application has been submitted successfully and then go ahead and click on close. Upon doing so, you'll notice the status of the application will shift from pending to ongoing, meaning that your role as a license surveyor is accomplished and it's now up to the ministry official involved in the process to do their part in the process. You'll notice that the progress level application has advanced from the initial 17% to 25%. As the various ministry officials involved in this process work on it, you'll be able to view the progression of your application on the progress bar up until the final approval will be done and at that point the progress level will be at 100%. Once your application has been fully approved by the ministry, you'll get a notification on your phone as a lenses surveyor that the sectional property survey application that you initiated has been approved. That's it for this tutorial on how to make a sectional property survey on Ardisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notification on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.